Hey everyone, it's Mace1370. Before we get into the video today, we're going to go ahead and, and announce the winner of the Leaf Pack giveaway. So I have here the URL for the video where everyone commented to enter the contest. We'll go ahead and pull those comments. There are 22 unique comments, so you have a 1 in 22 chance of winning. Drumroll, please. Congratulations, Alan. Uh, I will be reaching out over Discord. Um, sounds like he's been re his uh, Adventure Wrath, so that's awesome. All right, well, let's go ahead and get into how to make a great GVG defense. Okay, these days I feel like it's very difficult to put together two good GVG defense teams, and I think that's because there's been new units released that make old staples like Basar and Seaside Bologna uh, very, you know, less viable compared to how they used to be. Uh, namely, you know, Holiday Euphine for Basar and Rowana for SSB. Um, now I think there's four main factors that make a good GVG defense team. The first of those factors is RNG. So what do I mean by RNG? RNG is the ability of your team to perform way above its standard level of performance. And there's two main heroes that I think are going to increase RNG on your teams. The first of those is Charles. Charles has a ton of RNG baked into his kit. Um, he typically is run on Elbrus, which gives him a chance to attack whenever any of his allies are attacked. And then also he's almost always put on counter set as well, or I shouldn't say that. He's frequently put on counter set. Sometimes it's speed set. That gives him more RNG. And when he does counterattack, his S1 has a 60% chance to trigger his S2, so that's even more RNG. You get that extra percentage from his exclusive equipment up here. So on a typical team, you know, if Charles is counterattacking, you know, every so often, it's very manageable. Uh, maybe he, you know, sometimes gets to his S2 when he counterattacks, no big deal. But could you imagine for a moment Charles doing that literally every single time one of your characters attacks? Like, that happens to some people in some matches, and when that happens, Charles goes ballistic and he kills someone. The damage is just way too high to handle. So even teams that are, you know, designed to build the comps that Charles is typically put into, there is a chance, sometimes it's small if, you know, it's a good composition that they're bringing to you, uh, but it's still there nonetheless, that he will just go ballistic and counter every single thing and proc his S2 on every single thing, you know, and just wipe, at least wipe a unit out. So that's one unit that has RNG in his kit, and I think he's great on GVG defense right now. Another unit that has RNG baked in, into his kit that I'm seeing quite a bit is Remnant Violet. And Remnant Violet's RNG really just comes in from the fact that when he gets his uh, you know, max stacks on his focus and he gets attacked, he will randomly trigger his S3 on somebody. And his S3 hits like a truck because it has defense penetration. So you know if he just happens to miss a bunch, you know, because he starts with 50% evasion, you know, and if you put him on Dreamblade, that's another 20%. He can really just, you know, deal a ton of damage and just snipe a squishy unit right out from underneath you. Um, and sometimes there's very little you can do about it. So that's RNG, and those are two units that I think um, are really the best at it. Uh, so another factor that is important for GVG defense beyond just RNG is the capacity to kill units on the enemy team. What I mean by this is that people have to bring the same units to every single fight. And if you are able to take out a few of those units, even if they beat your tower, you are weakening them for the next fight. And it can make it very difficult for them, you know, in subsequent battles for that, you know, guild war. So you typically see teams put together with a lot of damage, um, at least, you know, two damage dealers typically, sometimes three. Um, and you don't see healers very often. And the idea there is that even if you beat them, they're just going to do so much damage to you so quickly that you can, or they, they can hopefully take out a unit or two and cripple you for the next fight. Um, that's a particularly good strategy for towers or forts because it makes it that much harder to deal with a stronghold, you know, which is awarded even more points. So we went over RNG, we went over, you know, designing your team to basically just deal a ton of damage and take out a unit. Um, another factor in my mind is overwhelming force. And that's kind of like, you know, doing a lot of damage to take out a unit. But for me, overwhelming force is using like really high speed units and making it such that you essentially either have to just take the hit or outspeed them. And what's very tricky because of speed variance, once you get your units up to like 270, 280, 290, it's almost impossible to reliably outspeed them. And that's because you have a 5% starting variance for every single unit when you start the match. 
So even if you're at you know 300 and they're at 290, there's a good chance that because of the variance, they're going to pop above you. You know, so you'll see units that are typically built very fast, uh, like Faithless Lydica. Um, I think Broman is probably a really good example of that. Um, he's a unit that is just sometimes he's going to get first turn on you no matter what. Um, I don't really have Broman built. He's ha down here somewhere. If only I had the speed gear to run Broman. Um, you know, he's someone that can just go first oftentimes and silence people, just cripple their team. Um, he's a good example of that. These speed units are often paired with units like Arbiter Vildred, you know, so they get to go first and then they do a ton of damage. Um, I think RB is another good example of that overwhelming force. He just brings a ton of DPS, you know, to the fight. And even if you kill him, sometimes he comes back if you don't have an extinction unit or, you know, something like ML Haste to counter him. And he's just going to do even more damage to you. Uh, so then the, the last factor for designing good teams is you want to design your team so that it takes the same type of team to beat both of yours. So what do I mean by that? Well, if your team one, like let's say for example, whatever you design, your team one is easily beat by SSB. If that's the only weakness for your second team, they usually, they only have one SSB, so they can't, you know, bring, bring her to both fights. Um, and so that creates a dilemma for them. Who do you bring SSB to? Um, so that's another strategy. So we can look at some of the teams that my guild has put together uh, to go through some examples of how to you know, implement the, these four principles. Um, you can see we got the little border. I think we finished in the top 100 last season. So we were fighting good guilds um, and some of the defenses uh, that we had worked pretty well, I thought. Um, so here's one of our forts with Tactus. I think this is one of the strongest GVG defenses we have. Um, he implements pretty much all of the principles that we just talked about. So you can see in this first team, he has two really high speed units and a high damage unit. So that's that overwhelming force. Um, he has Bassar here, who is probably on Abyssal Crown. So that's that RNG we talked about. You know, Crown can, even if Bassar misses, he can still Crown stun you. Um, and imagine how horrible it would be if all three of your guys got Crown stunned, like you would just die to RB. Um, and having two speed units means that, that variance is gonna go up even higher, making it very hard to outspeed this team. Um, so, you know, you might have to just hunker down and try to find some way to outlast and let them, you know, have turn one. Turn two here, he has Charles, so that's a lot of RNG. He also has Broman, another high speed unit who can also hold crown, even more RNG, you know, and then has the speed for overwhelming force. And because both of his teams have high speed units, you need high speed units to outspeed both of them. So that's that principle of, you know, the same thing beating both teams. You might have a, a unit that can outspeed one team, but maybe not enough speed units to outspeed both of his teams. Um, so I think that's a, a good set of teams right there that, you know, is difficult to handle. We can take a look at Blade Runner here, who also has some very strong teams. So this first team composition is one of the meta ones you see, RB, FCC, and Charles. Uh, this team is very strong because it has the RNG from Charles. FCC is just the most mitigation you can possibly get in a single unit. And then RB brings a ton of damage, you know, and he can come back and if he gets his basket, then he's just going to, you know, wreck face basically. Um, this team is uh, unfortunately beat by Dizzy, Garmin, and Achates. Um, that's usually what I do when I, you know, go into this team when I'm on offense. Uh, but that said, sometimes, you know, if RB just procs basket over and over again and Charles goes bananas, like, it can get really scary. So even the team that consistently beats this can still lose. And that's, I think, the key to making a good defense team is that, you know, the opponents are coming in and fighting AI characters, which are always going to make the same decisions, and they're just, they're never going to be as good as a human player. So, you know, your defense teams are at a big disadvantage. Um, so if you can design a team that can just sometimes win, that's pretty much the best you're going to get. Uh, his second team down here also has some uh, good principles that we talked about. Uh, the Remnant Violet adds RNG, so, you know, Violet can proc his... Uh, full stack, you know, S3 on some random person and just take out a unit. Uh, can weaken them for the next round. Uh, Alencia here uh, can strip and can help prevent SSB from autoing this team. So also very good options. Ruel is probably the one exception I've seen with putting a healer on your defense team. So even if they try to take out Rylet, you know, she can res him and then he can maybe get his S3 off. Um, I think, you know, Ruel is a solid choice to put on defense. She's the only healer I would run though. Uh, so we have another fortress here, Paradox. You can see he's running this exact same comp as Blade Runner uh, for the same reasons. It's a it's a very strong team. Um, it'll beat you know teams um, some percentage of the time, even against you know well well geared players. Uh, this bottom team here is interesting. 
Um, SSB is not seen on defense as much anymore because of Rwana. Um, you know, I think that even if you brought Rwana into this, you would run the risk of Alencia stripping everything and then SSB debuffing everything and putting unhealable and buff block. And, you know, if you don't have a cleanser or something like that, you could be in trouble. Um, and even with Rwana, get overwhelmed. So I think that's what Paradox is going for there on round two. Uh, then we can take a look at my team. I think my teams are okay. They're not amazing. Um, I'm running uh, Kron, Charles, and FCC for round one. This is very similar to just plugging in Vildred here. Kron is basically just big damage. Um, Charles is the RNG, and then FCC is the um, you know mitigation. And sometimes her provokes can be very annoying as well. Um, I think this is a strong team. Um, I think that it also loses to Dizzy, Garmin, and Achates. And ideally, my second team would be designed in that same way, but these are just the units I have, and I haven't found a better second one here. My thought with round two is that I have RNG with Rylet, and then I have a ton of damage with Vildred. And I mean, Rylet also does a ton of damage as well. Even if they bring a light bait to this team, uh, Vildred has AoE, so he's going to go around them, and then Rylet can potentially you know, trigger his counter or his uh, you know, full stack S3 into some random unit. Since these are both squishy damage dealers, I paired him with Ruel. Um, she's super tanky, and so I feel like they don't have a great target here. They can, I guess they can bring haste or something like that to, um, you know, Vildred. That's probably a good bet. Um, but if they kill Vildred, he comes back and does damage. If they attack Rylet, he gets stacks and can, you know, do damage. And if they attack Ruel, she's tanky and she's on Water's Origin, so um, they're just going to be taking this damage the whole time. So those are my teams, um, and hopefully that gives you just a general overview on kind of the factors to look at, you know, when you're making these. I can go through the builds that I have on these units just so you can see how I put them together. So we'll go over the, the team one first. Um, so I have Kron on this team, and I have Kron built on speed set because his base speed is so high, uh, speed set gives him a ton of extra stat compared to other sets. I think there is no reason to run Kron on anything other than a speed set. Uh, and then I have him on immunity because I, have, I haven't built slow. So effectively all of these pieces are basically speed set with just high damage on them. Um, I also wanted him to have some defense and HP here because he's paired with FCC, you know, and her barriers will make him a little harder to deal with. Um, so if they go after Kron, then Charles is going to Elbrus proc on them. Um, if they go after Charles, Kron is going to have free reign to do damage. Uh, I gave him Knife because this is just a ton of damage by itself. Um, it's pretty much the highest damage artifact I think you could put on a Thief, assuming that you know they have damage on them. Um, and it, I don't have to worry about basket proccing or not. Uh, so you can see his, da his equipment here. I think it's all good. None of it is uh, game changing or uh, super, super, super OP, but it's all very solid gear. Um, and so I was looking for things with damage and you know defense mostly. Um, and I was I didn't want a ton of extra speed because I just want him to hit as hard as possible. Um, and you can see he even gets up to 181 just by having speed set effectively and very few speed subs. Uh, so that's Kron. Go find Charles here. Sometimes people build him on speed set and tune him to go faster than Kron. I think that's a really strong option because it helps enable Kron's artifact, uh, the Elias knife. Uh, I just have him on counter set. I wanted him on counter set and very thick and you know bruisery in case I ever wanted to pick him in RTA. I think he's just a more flexible pick this way. I don't pick him in RTA a ton though. Um, so I built him pretty much as tanky as I could get him while maintaining adequate damage, which for me was over 3k attack and over 250 crit damage. Um, his his gear is pretty good. Um, I got some good counter pieces on him. Um, and some this immunity helm is mediocre. It has a bunch of Efres unfortunately. Uh, this chest is very well statted. And the neck is kind of mediocre as well. Uh, but you can see basically here, he's just designed to live a long time and optimize the amount of times that he can S1 into S2 via countering or you know using his um, Elbrus. So then FCC um, has a pretty standard build. You know you want her fast, over 200 speed, and then with as much health and defense as you can get. Um, health being the priority because that buffs her barriers. Uh, and then you also want a fair bit of effectiveness. You can hear Crypto complaining in the background. Um, I like having some effectiveness on her so that she can occasionally get provokes. I used to have her up around 90 effectiveness, and then she could provoke things like Crow or Ruel and, and everything, but uh, I just wasn't happy with it because it still felt like it didn't happen all the time, and I wanted her health higher. 
Um, so that's why I decided to do that. So that's team one. Team two, uh, we had Ruel, who's up here, I think. Uh, I missed her. Okay, here's Ruel. Um, this is a pretty standard Ruel build. I think she's a little slower than I would ideally like, but she is on Water's Origin, which really helps. You know, when she gets hit hard, it CR boosts her and kind of makes up for this bad speed. Um, if I could keep all of these stats and get her to like 180, 185, I'd be really happy. And once you get her up to like 190, 200, you can run Touch of Rekos um, instead of Water's Origin. Uh, so basically with Ruel, you want as much defense and health as you can get. I think over 19k health and 19 or one, you know, 1.9 defense is really solid. Um, the speed I mentioned, and then I like having her on at least 150 ER. And if you can get 150 ER while keeping immunity, I think that is very powerful. Um, it really makes your ER that much more effective because everyone has to do the check to remove the immunity buff with a strip first, and then another check, you know, to debuff you. Um, so it really increases the amount of times that she's going to get out of, you know, getting debuffed. Um, her gear is good, not amazing. Like, this sword is pretty crappy. Uh, this helm is good. The chest is good. Um, I haven't found a great Soul Weaver sword yet. I also have, this is like the best Soul Weaver neck I have, and it's not great. Um, her ring is solid. She's getting a lot of her speed from this ring. I wish it had percentage defense, though, instead of flat defense, because her base defense is super high. And then these boots are amazing, and these are the first Hell Raid boot I got, and the only Hell Raid boot I got, and they rolled super well. So I was pleased with that. So then we have Arbiter Veldred. Um, Arby is a pretty standard build. You want him fast, uh, because if he can get his S3 off before an enemy, you know, buffer like Dain or something like that can put up, um, you know, anti or crit res buff or defense buff, I think that's very strong. So I like having him at this speed. And then with this speed, you basically want 100% crit and then as much damage as you can pack on him. Um, I'm almost got him to 4k attack. If I could get him one more imprint or if I could get his basket any higher then I would get there, I think. Um, his basket's only plus 21, um, so I really want to max his basket out. His gear is very good. Um, I put a lot of time into getting this. Um, it's all very you know highly weighted to get these stats. But my OCD is just absolutely dying because I'm not able to get him to 4k attack right now. One day I'll get another basket or a Vildred imprint and then we'll get there. Um, and so here's Remnant Violet. I had him on Lifesteal for a long time. Um, I can show you guys that build also. I switched him over to this build for RTA. I want to try it. I think it's probably going to be stronger than the Lifestyle Lifesteal build, which didn't feel like it did enough. It was slow. It was around 180 speed. And yes, it just didn't feel that impactful. Um, so I have him built a lot speedier now with really high damage. I think I could actually get him even faster, but I, I want him tuned to go after my Falconer Clurry. But I think I could, um, I think I have a ring here. Let's see, is it this one? No. Oh, maybe I put it on Kali, yeah. So I could give him this, and then he could go even faster, and he can still get two more imprints, so that would max his crit. Um, so this would be... Uh, a really awesome build if I could ever get my Falcon or Clurry to like 270 or something like that. Oh, and then I was going to do Lifesteal really quick. So I can show you how Remnant Violet would look on Lifesteal. I think it's a very viable build and is good for Guild Wars too because, um, you know, if they hit him thinking he's going to be squishy, it can take them by surprise. I guess I should toggle immunity on here. He can get away with crit set when he's 240 or above speed, but anything slower than that and... Uh, I would not want him without immunity. So let's see, I think it was this chest, yes. And nope, it was not that neck. Uh, let me see, I think it was a crit damage neck. Yes, it was this one. And then we had an attack ring, which was not that one, it was this one. And then we had a lifesteal boot with speed. Yeah, so this is my lifesteal build on him. I may go back to this. I think this is a strong build. Um, it's fast enough that he gets turns, and he's fairly tanky and still does very good damage. Um, I, I just felt like I was getting less value out of him because when he's this slow, he doesn't pair very well with Falconer Clurry. This is more of an RTA thing. Um, Falconer Clurry, you want you know around like 250 or something like that at least. 
So she would use her ability and then there'd be such a gap between her and Rylet that he wouldn't be able to capitalize on it well. Like stuff could happen, you know, it could get cleansed or, you know, the unit could just take a turn or, you know, stuff like that. Um, FCC could get skill null up, etc. Um, so I'm trying them on speed set for now and I've been happy with it. Uh, anyway, so those are my teams. Um, let me know if you have any good GVG teams that kind of fit the criteria we talked about earlier. Um, I'm always interested in, you know, hearing how people are setting up their defenses. Or if you have any tips for me, like what I could do to optimize my team, I would be interested in that as well. So thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Later.